Okay, so in this kind of... <laughs> hey everybody, it's Trent again. So in this one, we'll kind of talk about what we... Uh, how we kind of need to set up some of the uh, UV spaces um, and update some UVs. So we have kind of this one, which kind of still has this kind of unwrapped... Uh, if I unwrap it, it kind of changes its UV. And we kind of saw that with the with the, the regular quad last, so this one. So once we make these modifications, we want to kind of update some pieces. So I can go ahead and just say like, delete this one, and I'm going to use this for all the UVs going forward. So we do have a couple tools to, to be able to get that done. So what I need to do is create one more thing, and that's just a bounding rectangle. So we'll use it like a planar, uh, kind of rectangle. So let's say four. Uh, so I have a rectangle. I'll just put it at zero, and I'll keep my UV space at 450 by 450. So once I have this kind of bounding rectangle that represents my UV outline, what I can do is I can set with the right click of this tool, we have a generate planar UVs with a reference curve. So I can go here. And then I can select this mesh. So now I've given it its its UVs. So now that if I call up that UV editor uh, right here, and I select it, it's exactly what I see uh, in the space that I kind of see it. So what I can then now do, so since these are different, I can use the other option with inside of the transfer UVs. I'm grabbing this one, and then I'm going to select these two actually at the same time so instead of using distance or ray casting i'm actually just going to use topology so since the topology hasn't changed i can i can use this tool i'll say okay so now that I, when i select it i am getting this uv structure as well cool and then i can delete this once i'm finished with it so now that i've updated the uvs for pretty much everything and I've thickened my parts, I can now use Grasshopper to be able to flow. So I'm gonna actually delete this, and you can find Botch at the end, so when you install it, it'll automatically come. We do have some generating geometry, and as well as some additional tools, so Sub D, as well as Mesh Loft, Mesh Project, and some of the ones you guys already know. So this next one, we'll use the Remap kind of component. I've double clicked within my viewport and I'm gonna add some per, uh, some basic mesh kind of components to pick stuff up. So what I have, and it's also under params and mesh. We we'll make four and then I'm gonna repeat this as well. So since I have this kind of original mesh and then the original kind of last, and then this modified last. So first I'll set this one as my modified. I'll keep it down here. And then this will be my other one. So this is the modified, this is the unmodified. Uh, but since I've set like the updated, all the UVs, all my source meshes will be the same. So I can set one, set the source mesh for both of these. And then I'll set this for the target mesh and this one for the other target mesh. So now I'm able to do two remappings at the same time with Grasshopper. And then I can go ahead and just hide all this. So I know it's in Grasshopper because it's red. I can then hide all of the other stuff. And I still have an orange one. So this is for all of my parts as well. And since everything else is hidden, I can just say select mesh. set multiple meshes, and then put it within inside of this one. So I can start to see how it's gonna be wrapped up on that modified one, or I can actually pump it right in here and how it would react onto more of a tighter one as well. Cool. So that's pretty much it. I mean, we can go into a little bit more detail, but for this video, we just wanted to focus on opening Grasshopper, getting components, and kind of getting some parts up. 
Uh, and what uh, is nice, as you can see, so there maybe is a little interaction between these two meshes. I still have all of every the the components available to me. Um, I can come in here, maybe change my gumball, maybe go up in the z-axis. So since everything is flat and we're remapping it, I can play with the z-axis. I can play with the thickness a little bit, and maybe we need to give it a little bit of space in between. And we can see that it's automatically been updated. So I've given it a little bit more space, so I'm seeing less interaction, uh, which is great. And I think that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, and then we'll kind of, I'll, I'll finish out the tongue as a part, and then we can map that up. And once we've finished, uh, in the next video, we'll bake it down and, and kind of use those pieces as well. Awesome.